I reflected a few minutes upon the title of today's panel, that is, what was described as growing consensus of governments towards the end of criminalization based on social orientation and gender identity. And I looked around me. I looked around me and saw the president of the Geneva Lesbian Association, Estine, also the first openly lesbian president of the city parliament. I saw the secretary of the National League Organization, recently elected as municipal councillor of the same city. And I saw and remembered many other gays and lesbians, bi or trans persons, activists or not, who had made things go forward at all levels, here in Switzerland and elsewhere. Then I remembered further back, thinking about the first times LGBTIQ activists spoke in front of the UN in 1994, 70 years ago, in the very room where the Human Rights Council is taking place today, a few steps from here. Douglas Sanders, Griselda Fernandez, and a few others. I was among them, and I can assure you that all heads were turning then at the mere mention or uttering of words such as gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans. Heads turning to see who are those people who dare to speak out. Since then, of course, many other militants or uh, activists have, sp have spoken out, coming from less secure places, and some of them have died, such as David Kato from Uganda, or Naxolo Nogwaza from South Africa, or Fanyan Viola Eddy from Sierra Leone. More recently, in here in Geneva, a lesbian activist, Kasia Jacqueline Nabagazera, has just received the Martin Ennals Prize for her achievements in the frame of LGBTIQ human rights. Uh, then, today, I look around me and I see even more reasons to believe that one of the strongest reasons why there is a growing consensus among governments on LGBTIQ rights is that everywhere activists and organizations have been active, vocal, to reaffirm that if human rights are truly universal, indivisible, interdependent, and interrelated, they also had to include the rights of people discriminated on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. At a different scale, but also as a form of tribute to all those activists and organizations, the Parliament of the City of Geneva unanimously accepted last November a motion asking for the launching of an international coalition of cities against homophobia and transphobia. The aim of this motion, which I drafted, is to try to establish a chain of solidarity that would go from one city to the other in order to fight against discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Many actions could be taken by this coalition, and I say could because we still don't know what options uh, we take and of course that would be to the member cities to decide. But possibilities are, for instance, that the city's member of the coalition could share good practices, as it is already the case in various fora in Europe and elsewhere. This coalition could support organizations or finance projects, especially in parts of the world where it is most needed. The coalition could also have its own prize for award to be given to individuals organizations fighting in the field. The coalition could have an office, and if this office was based in Geneva, it could also help and welcome the delegates, and of course I think about LGBT uh, delegates, um, delegates who would come to Geneva on various occasions. Last but not least, the city's member of this coalition could encourage the governments to support future initiatives, such as the government joint statement signed in March of this year. So my, one of my many hopes is to be back in this room in a few years' time with news of recent developments 